Spoiler alert, the films we review on the Slashers and Screamers podcast are guaranteed to be spoiled in full if you listen beyond this point. If you've not seen the film we're reviewing this week, I urge you to find it and watch it to your heart's content before joining us. But if you don't care and just want to listen to fun conversations, then by all means, stick around for Slashers and Screamers. Groovy. It's just a creepy movie. It definitely creeps you out for sure. Somebody has to be perfect, so it might as well be. <laughs> Talk about deja vu. You live to tell the tale. You gotta find one of where we'll is the Slashers and Screamers podcast. All right, we're here for another episode of Slashers and Screamers 2022 edition, episode one. Go ahead and get the squad up in here. May as well go ahead and drag you in, James. I hear over there huffing and puffing. What are you doing? I'm just sitting here. Trying to find yourself? Yeah. Well, happy new year. Trying to rewind myself. Yeah. It helps to pass the time. Well, fuck my new year, right? <laughs> what have you done on your New Year's Day? Well, just getting, you know, my, my happy new year wishes shot down. I say happy new year and you just keep on talking kid rock smack, so I don't know what to do. How do you say happy new year to you? You, just now. <laughs> happy new year, Bill. Thank you, JB. And and the dogs. Yeah, well, tell them to hush. And Uh one of our other mini co-hosts, you know him as the Memphis Menace. Rick, hop on in here, you mangy bastard. Uh, I want to say say RIP to uh, Betty White, RIP to John Madden. Indeed. And uh, if you want to go with the rules of three, Dan Reeves. Um, famed yeah. Atlanta Falcons head coach, but you know, uh, Dan yeah. Spivey, Dan Spivey, and you know, Betty White's the one that we've been waiting for for a long time, man. It just seemed like there were. This is probably the one of the few celebrities who got repeat death hoaxes on her name because she just lived long enough to have them, I guess. But yeah, we lost uh, Betty White over the last few days, and it fucking sucks. That's your cue, Rick. I'm talking to you. Oh, sorry. Yeah, no, it does suck. She was really good in Lake Placid. Yeah, that's what I know her most as. Lake Placid. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she she was in it. She was hilarious. I was Betty it was, White. It was most definitely Betty White, JB. She was the one farming the big alligator, crocodile. You know how to tell the difference between an alligator and a crocodile? The shape of their nose. And, and that how would their be teeth stick out. And that would be Casey. Final girl, Casey, who hasn't been introduced until now. Hello, Casey. Well, I was waiting. Y'all weren't going to let me talk about Betty White shit. Obviously horrible. And now you're talking about alligators and crocodiles. Like, I don't have something to say. I do. So you know how to tell the difference? Do you know how to tell the difference between a crocodile and an alligator? I feel like yours is going to be a joke. (laughs) That's a shitty thing to say. Billy, prove me wrong. So when they leave... Whichever one oh says, God. see you later, and the other one says, after a while. I hate you. So that's how you know. <laughs> it's the only way to know. There is Crocodiles no other are way. way bigger. Have you seen a saltwater crocodile next to a person? Not lately. I'll send you a picture later. It's intense. Which is the big one? The crocodile's the big one, yeah? Yeah, crocodile's a lot bigger. That's why Steve Irwin was so impressive. He didn't mess around with those pussy alligators. He went straight for the crocodile. Well, where he was, they're more prevalent also. Hmm. Maybe. Crocodiles are rarely found in the United States. It's almost all alligators. Crocodile. Yeah. Crocodile. <laughs> Except for the Everglades. Crocodile. Yeah, deep in Florida. But yeah, crocodiles' noses are like V-shaped and alligator noses are more of a U. So I really just wanted to get my see you later and after a while joke in. That's my only interest in alligators and crocodiles this week. Because we've got a movie that is not very related to either one of those things. Right? Not very or not at all? Uh, well, not at all, I Did guess. You know that a crocodile is the same thing as a dinosaur? You're thinking of pterodactyls, James. No. Crocodilicus. Oh, breaking out the Latin? 
the only the Latin I expected you to yeah the only the only Latin I expected you to break out on this show would be of the pig variety, Crocodilicus. Rick Crocodilicus Rick Crocodilicus Rick. <laughs> Rick, tell the listeners what movie we watched this week and give us the rundown, please. Would you rather be a crocodile or an alligator? So uh, we did Fender Bender, a 2016 American slasher film. Uh, we watched it on Shutter, and um, the actors, actresses in this, uh, Mackenzie Vega was in this. Uh, her character's name is Hilary Diaz. She's known for her role in the TV series The Good Wife, and she's known for her role in Sin City. Cassidy Freeman was Jennifer. Uh, she's known for her role as Tess Mercer in CW Smallville. And Candy Logmire and A&E's Western Logmire. Uh, Steven Michael Quinzeta as Mario. Um, <laughs> he's known as Agent Steven Gomez in Breaking Bad. And Bill Sage as the driver. He's known as in um, American Psycho, most notably. Uh, Wrong Turn, 2001 remake. He was on Nurse Jackie and a TV show called Power. Um, this is 91 minutes, came out May 23rd, 2016. It's pretty much an independent release. It was released on the defunct TV channel called Chiller TV, which doesn't exist anymore. It had a limited uh, theater release and I couldn't really find a budget for it at all. Um, but it was released by, uh, or distributed by Shout Factory. They do some really awesome horror reissues and stuff that's out of print and all that stuff. Um, but it was also directed by Mark... Bavea couldn't find anything on him. Have no idea. Um, but yeah, we watched uh, Fender Bender. Well, you probably couldn't find much on him because he hasn't di- he hadn't directed anything prior to this in like nineteen twenty years. Oh wow! Yeah, but also Mackenzie Vega is the daughter in Saw. She plays Diana. What? Yeah, I, I did know not see IMDb did not tell me that. I did, oh, not, I did see... not know that. I didn't see anything about Saw. Well, I'll be damned. I'm it, just it, it, you it, know. it is there. Yeah. The, but also, it, her sister is Alexa Vega of Spy Kids fame. Well, well uh, you say Spy Kids, I say, you know, Machete Kills. Um, <clears throat> same universe. One minute's a hell. <laughs> <laughs> James loved this movie. I can tell already. Well, I can tell you this right now. Um, Mackenzie Vega may not be the hammer that her sister is, but she's probably the hammer for this film. Ooh, agree to disagree. Okay. Yeah, I, I don't. Th- I I disagree. Okay, Rick. Well, you can eat a bag of dicks first of all. But it's fine. It was a girl me. at the beginning, dude. Nah. Yes. Oh, we're split. It was James, a girl at the beginning. Your thoughts? Huh? James, we're requesting your thoughts on who the hammer was. Uh, oh boy. Sure. Was what? That Vega chick. Thank you, James. <laughs> Famous dad, uh, Vega from Street Fighter. Also known as the Spanish Ninja. <laughs> One and the same, James. One and the same. Well, okay. Um, who is it, Casey? Who's your uh, Who's your hammer for Fender Bender? I think it's Rachel, the girl with the short blonde hair. I thought yeah, I she was who, cute. I know who Rachel is. I'm trying to process your thoughts here. That's fine. Um, okay. Well, I mean, you're you're not <laughs> far off. You know, in my in my mind, you're spot on in your own mind. But like, yeah, she'd be a number two for me. Maybe I'm just trying to get closer to uh, Alexa Vega. I don't know. I don't know. You you live your it's dreams. A, yeah, it's a tough one. It, it is a tough one. I'll give you that. But uh, you know, Rick, you were uh, bitching at me earlier because I didn't talk enough about a movie that is soon to drop on us. So go ahead. What do you want to say about the Mutilator Two? Uh, so this came out, um, a couple weeks ago, but it was, uh, broken by Bloody Disgusting, which is an awesome horror, uh, website you should check out. Um, they are releasing the direct sequel to Mutilator, which was also known as Spring Break. Um, it's going to be directed by the original director and one of the original, um, guys in there, Buddy Cooper, uh, or Buddy Cooper, sorry, came back to write and direct it, who did the original one. And a couple of the other people that were in the original one are coming back. Um, to to star alongside in it so it's pretty awesome and then the original guy who did um the score he's done uh story of paranormal activity he's done stuff uh my nightmare on elm street which is a documentary he's done scream queen the series um, a lot of different stuff so 
yeah, pretty pretty big news for them to release a sequel more than thirty years later. But hey, I guess whatever works. So, well, I'm down with that. I do think that the Mutilator, the first original Mutilator, would be kind of, I mean, perfect for this podcast. It's you know exactly up my alley and what I thought of when you know I wanted to you know join the project. So yeah, why not uh, Mutilator two? Let's uh, let's all go see it in theaters. Screw all that. <clears throat> the percolator too a fine cup of coffee <laughs> and this time it's personal so we've got some stuff uh dropping pretty soon we're recording on january 2nd uh january 4th a few things are going to be dropping on dvd uh that i'm sure rick is gonna own uh black friday horror comedy starring uh i guess the hammer of the entire franchise of evil dead bruce campbell bruce campbell you damn right and of final destination fame devin sawa is in this one uh i was so in love with him when i was little really see yeah i i knew him from little giants and i'm pretty sure uh like that's where a lot of people got their first sight of devin sawa but the final destination movies i think (laughs) They they got off to a really hot start. Now, they had, you know, the, the countless number of sequels. I think they made it up to, what, five? Five. Five or six, yeah. Um, but he was in, what, the first one or two? Two. Okay. Well, this one, again, a horror comedy called Black Friday. On Thanksgiving night, a group of disgruntled toy store employees begrudgingly arrive for work to open the store at midnight for the busiest shopping day of the year. Meanwhile, an alien parasite crashes to Earth in a meteor. So the group of misfits led by store manager Jonathan, played by Bruce Campbell, and longtime employee Ken, played by Devin Sawa, soon find themselves battling against hordes of holiday shoppers who've been turned into monstrous creatures. How great does that sound? It sounds fun. It does sound sound fun. fun. Also, and, Devin Sawa's only in the first one. I looked it up. Oh, okay. Well, Michael Jai White is going to be in this one. And what the fuck is that? Yeah. Who? Hey, Michael Jamal White. And that Urkel. <laughs> that's Jaleel White. Um, Michael Jai White is uh, the guy that <laughs> was... <laughs> He, he, he was in the uh, Undisputed movies after uh, Wesley Snipes and Ving Rhames were in the first one. You know what I heard, Bill? Please tell me. I heard that uh, that guy you just said was going to play uh, Clubber Lang's son in the new Rocky movie. No shit. Going to play, uh, what is it called? Flipper Lang. Creed. Creed 3. I'm not in love with the Creed movies. It's going to be uh, Clubber Lang's son against Apollo's son, Rocky. Well, I know it. Well, I thought Rocky wasn't going to be in any more of the movies. Guess who's going to be in the other corner, Bill? Well, Mr. T, hopefully. Mr. T. Good God. Oh, just shit on it, Rick. Just I mean, shit on they, it, why don't I guess, you? I guess they need to just draw the series out. I mean, even though Stallone's retired. You know. Rick, you just gave us a lay down. Rick, you just gave us a lay down on a movie that's having a sequel 30 years later. <laughs> yeah. I mean, this is yeah. a sequel that's new. This isn't even, this isn't even horror, so. <laughs> the Poodleator <laughs> 2. Poodleator 2. Also By dropping way, on January 4th. Oh, my God. Go ahead, Rick. Uh, Halloween Kills comes out January 11th on Blu-ray and DVD, and it has the extended edition with the alternate ending included. Well, what's Where the matter? They say you thought, evil you hated dies it. tonight 14 more times. Is that even horror? <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't I don't hate it. I've actually I've actually changed my tune a little bit on it. So Oh, you bastard. You flip-flopping bastard. Let's hear why. Oh, uh, I mean, I went into it expecting like something amazing and that's why I was disappointed, but then I rewatched it a couple times and like it's not really that bad. Not that bad. You loved it. Yeah, it's pretty damn yeah, I didn't good. Love Rick. It. It's I mean, it's it's good, but it's not like amazing. I mean, but that's what I went into it thinking. But yeah, the alternate well, ending is supposed to be good, so I can't wait. So we're talking about Creed two, Creed three. No, we're not talking about your bullshit. Creed three it ain't come out yet, boo. Oh, I right. remember Creed. They're an awesome band. Not <laughs> listen. Oh, Lord, what open? Y'all also remember dropping that video game, Street Fighter. Oh, do I know it? Yeah. Oh, you get. 
That's impressive, James. So impressive. Also dropping January 4th is The Super Deep. What's that? Is it a shark movie? It sounds like a shark movie. It sounds like a shark movie. It is not, the fur- is it? it is the furthest thing from a shark movie. The Cola Super Deep Borehole is the most large-scale secret object of the country. In 1984, Van Halen! Inexplicable sounds like the screams of many voices were recorded at a depth of more than 12 kilometers. In the wake of these events, the object was closed. A small research team went down below the surface to find out what secret the world's deepest borehole was hiding what they have found turned out to be the greatest threat in history and the future of humanity is in their hands and this one yeah, that sounds pretty cool yeah it doesn't sound too bad uh except for the fact that i don't know who the hell is gonna play in it it's foreign so that's why it nobody's sounds listed super stupid to me <laughs> uh, james i already made this movie bill it's like a foreign movie because I just said that. uh I said somewhere, I was in, on DVD. Uh, somewhere in Russia was uh you just made where up. this hole was. Well yeah. But the the, the but DVD the, I'm ta- we're talking we're talking about movie. we're talking about upcoming releases here on January fourth in two days. This is coming out on D V D in two days. Oh, I thought it was gonna be released. No. But no, also this released this in theaters or something. I'm sure it is. But it's being released on DVD, James. Also being released on DVD, The Djinn. A mute young boy unleashes a sinister monster after he makes a wish to fulfill his greatest desire, to have a voice. Now trapped in a small apartment with nowhere to hide, Dylan must find a way to survive until the stroke of midnight or pay the ultimate price. It's basically The Purge awesome. without a voice. I hate when that happens. But The Djinn, the djinn, a djinn is... Uh, Muslim's version of the devil. So, <clears throat> is that is that true? Yes. No, I think it's a genie. They Muslims hate genies also. Genie. Yeah, they, they they hate um they hate genies also. Uh, this is in the supernatural category, so you know that that's not really going to do anything for me. Um, I'm pretty sure I watched the trailer to this thing before before we came on, and it doesn't look half bad. I might give it a watch. It's releasing on DVD. You said in two days. I can hardly wait. Well, you're gonna have to. Now, let's talk about some upcoming projects. All right, so hitting the... Now, this is going to it's gonna be a little bit. You know, hitting theaters in July is a film called Bed Rest. Good God, special, that's far away. It is far away, but it was, just, um, it was just announced, I guess. And this one stars Melissa Barrera and Guy Burnett. Um, after years of struggling to start a family, Julie Rivers is pregnant again and moving into a new home with her husband as they embrace a fresh start. Upon being ordered to mandatory bed rest, Julie begins to slowly unravel as she suffers through the monotony and anxiety of her new constraints. Soon, terrifying, ghostly experiences in the home begin to close in on Julie, stirring up her past demons and causing others to question her mental stability. Trapped and forced to face her past and the supernatural, because her past isn't enough, Julie fights to protect herself and her unborn baby. This gives me vibes of Gerald's Game. I love Gerald's Game. It was fantastic. Chained to your bed, can't do anything, can't move, can't get unlocked, and then your mind is just doing a number on you. Guy Fieri cooking in the kitchen. (laughs) Guy Fieri cooking in in the kitchen. Um... Uh, salt bay dropping salt in your eyeballs Lori evans taylor is uh she's a noob but she wrote and directed this one she was involved with final destination six so i guess we were wrong about only five films and i don't know if she wrote that one or directed it i don't remember the sixth one i'm sure i, I don't saw either. it uh was the final destination maybe that was part six I thought that was part five. Maybe I'm remembering wrong. Mm, sounds like a bunch of bullshit to me, Casey. Final Destination 6. But it's Brad upcoming. Parker, is it upcoming? Yeah, it's actually supposed to be released in 2022. Well, I guess I'm going to have to watch two through five. I was like, Bra- what the fuck? <laughs> well, Brad Parker was originally set to direct this when he was uh, involved with uh, the Chernobyl Diaries. So this could be cool. I'm I'm totally down with it. Seems a little supernaturally, but I can totally get down with it. I just wish that one movie was a shark movie. That would make it way cooler. Shark movies in space would be pretty damn awesome. I'd watch it. I'll watch pretty much any shark movie, though. 
Yeah, you're you're you are to sharks as James is to werewolves. I like any kind of like shark, alligator, like big animal horror situation. Crocodile, maybe so orca to... from the seventies. Yeah, a crocodile, anaconda. Yeah. I love anything like that. Big fan. Yeah, James is into anything that's bipedal that should not be. So yeah. Alone with you is uh, the last one I have on my list here. This one stars. <laughs> Well, that sounds scary as hell. Well, yeah, it's supposed to be. Uh, stars Barbara Crampton, Emily Bennett. Barbara Streisand. Not Barbara Streisand. Um, Emily Bennett, Dora Madison, and Emma Miles. Um, as a young woman, painstakingly, is this the second time I've used the word painstakingly? No, begrudgingly. Um, as a young woman, painstakingly prepares a romantic homecoming for her girlfriend. Their apartment begins to feel more like a tomb. When voices, shadows, and hallucinations reveal a truth she's been unwilling to face. Mmm, spooky. Yeah. Early come up with that shit at? <laughs> In a lab, James. In a lab. Oh, so they don't ask you. Yeah, James. You'd only put werewolves on every corner. There ain't been no good werewolf picture be in a long time. It has been a minute. But with this one, Dark Star Pictures... Um, distributes in the u.s it said that dark star will release theatrically in early 2022 in new york and la plus additional markets across the country so i don't think it's going to be um in very many theaters so this might be one of those things you'll you used to walk into blockbuster and there's only one box of it it might be one of those but sometimes those are the best that's a concept unfamiliar to you casey i'm assuming weird for you to assume that how long has blockbuster not been a thing been to a blockbuster they turned the one near my old house into an advanced financial but i spent a lot of time in there we went to captain video more but i've definitely been to a blockbuster see captain video did y'all ever go to hollywood video yeah it was across the street from blockbuster pretty sure james his low your local one was a hollywood video right no it was an eagle (laughs) video yeah, but that you're the only person I ever went into a Hollywood video with, and I don't know why that is. Maybe I ain't ever never seen a Hollywood video. James, I'm pretty damn sure we went with your mom to Hollywood video before getting posted up in the paint at the Civic Center. Maybe there was one in Gallatin. My uncle Jeff used to work at some sort of movie movie store. Yeah, we're not supposed to talk about those kind here. This isn't. But this I don't is, know what kind it was. Hmm. James, you drop you name drop family members more than anybody on this podcast. I, I feel like uh, they're going to start asking for scratch pretty soon. The only people that Rick name drops is uh, Freddie Loggins. <laughs> I name drop my mom a fair amount. You've never once name dropped your mom. You've By referred name. to her as mom. Oh, okay, yeah, that's true. I'll never say her name. That's because my family's very important, Bill. My brother's birthday is January fourth. That's dropping. Would that be old swords? That would be swords. Schwartz. Not Schwartz. Yeah. Pretty close. Schwartz. Well, I guess that brings us to our uh, feature presentation. Do you say presentation Happy or presentation? Happy birthday, Schwartz. I say presentation. <clears throat> I hope you get all that you dreamed of. <laughs> a little bit more. <laughs> he'll hear you, and I'm sure he'll appreciate it. And we appreciate him. Swords, you're the best. Feel weird calling somebody by their screen name. I've got a, another friend. I'm not gonna name drop him, but uh, he uses the, the name Obi Kalobi on Twitch and other social medias. And when we would stream games together, I would accidentally call him by his name so many times to the point where he had to tell me, "Hey, yeah, brother, you uh, use my screen name." So here I am saying, "Hey, Obi," and I feel like such a schmuck when I do that. Sometimes you gotta have a top secret name. Yeah, I've got a top secret. So name, his right? name is Obi, but his screen name is Obi Kalobi. No, James, his name is something completely different. We'll say it's Kyle, but it's not Kyle. Um, but I have to call him Obi to preserve his secret identity. I guess sounds like a bunch of shit to me. <laughs> and so we're on to our feature presentation. Oh, by the way, uh, James, he loves when. Uh, when I reference your tirade that you threw at us on Evil Dead Two, if you remember, there was a part of the uh, of your little hey, uh, promo that Obi-Wan that you could, Kenobi. Obi, yeah, Obi Kalobi yes. likes when uh, when I reference uh, and I'm not buying a dime of it. 
<laughs> we listen to that numerous times, and uh, every time we don't believe something the other says, so I'm not buying a dime of it. So it's a throwback to you, James. More than you deserve. So again, on to our free feature <laughs> feature Kenobi. Our creature feature presentation. Obi Wan Kenobi. Hey, Billy, didn't stay. Casey have something about this week in horror? Something about the mutilator, too. I was just going to say that we're recently celebrating Barbara Crampton's birthday oh. and Sean S. Cunningham's birthdays. Oh. Birthday. Their birthdays. He only has one. Um, she only has one. But yeah. Everyone only has one, I believe, traditionally. Well, that's debatable. But yeah. Happy birthday to some uh, horror icons. Yeah, definitely icons. Uh, Barbara Crampton uh, just mentioned a movie that she's going to be in pretty soon, or I guess she's already in it and is going to drop soon. Uh, Sean S. Cunningham directed the single greatest piece of film that there ever was. By that, do you mean Friday the 13th Part 2? I do mean that. Yeah. I didn't I didn't think it was, you know, questionable, so I just left it out. I just left to how... check in. Okay, well, I, I know how James likes to piss and moan. Every time the words Friday the 13th are thrown out on this podcast. You could have just stopped at piss and moan. I like how James just pisses and moans. So, guys, Fender Bender. I really hope you guys liked it as much as I did. Because I fucking love this movie. I I was really surprised. I I like it a lot. Why were you surprised, Rick? No, I was surprised. What is is surprising about (laughs) me (laughs) picking a good movie? (laughs) Nothing. I thought it was going to suck, to be honest. And based off just the cover art and the name of it, and then I went into it and I was like, I was like, dude, this music is fucking amazing. My Jay, wife thought I was watching a, my wife thought I was watching an eighties movie because of the music. I was like, no, this is nineteen eighties. This is two thousand sixteen. You okay over there, James? No, James. I'll tell you what I like about this movie. Mm, let's hear it. Not a damn thing. <laughs> Like, come on you're full of shit either you didn't watch it or you're just you're, or you're full of shit tune in next week to find out the answer <laughs> so if you did watch this movie i would figure it would be right up your alley james i do not like when people get rear-ended <laughs> that's it car accidents are not entertainment james this was not really uh a crash okay this was a fender bender hence the name uh James, there was barely I believe enough for one minute that you're not a monster truck person you have monster truck <laughs> energy he's probably got grave digger on speed though i don't know what that means Drug energy <laughs> i don't think i've got monster truck energy billy you've got you've got monster not truck energy excited. james i don't get that Even excited if- even if he doesn't have monster truck energy, he's got tractor pull energy, and that's I don't know close much to about damn, that. That's close enough. J- James hears about a, a fender bender, and he automatically goes into, I guess, mechanic mode, like trying to figure out how to fix shit. So I, I can understand if you're a little bit queasy on this one, James. But it's it didn't do enough damage to even scratch either vehicle. So that's not what this movie is about. Who puts a fender bender on their insurance anyway? If there wasn't nothing <laughs> wrong with it, would they even exchange information? for? Well, there was some like scratches and jacked up paint. It, so well, you know, it was her mom's car. It wasn't her car. Deal. Yeah. And she was a first time driver. Like she's 17 years old. Have you not yeah. ever, have you listen, James, when you were 16, you got this 1987 GMC Jimmy that your dad wouldn't care if it rolled off a cliff. <laughs> yeah, but I couldn't put nothing on the insurance bill. It'd make the premium go up. That's true. Well, let's not put logic into an illogical situation. Let's talk about this cold open. All right, so this style of opening um, where I guess Rick found his hammer right off the bat um this is, you know, the type of preview where you you see what the killer's all about, you know, without revealing too much. I like this type of cold open. You got just this unnamed victim just living life. And, and I, I guess like a if you were to make this movie as compact as possible, you have the cold open. A slight stalk, quick kill, quick getaway, and that's it. How you feel about this cold open? Fantastic. It's not true. I thought it was pretty effective. I liked it. I like a movie with a cold open. Um, we've brushed on this movie a little bit, but um, 
it was kind of scream to me like a phone conversation leading to a dramatic death of a woman in a precarious situation that we know nothing about that we know nothing about it so i have scream in my notes as well it was more itcher. of a Okay, yeah, I can get down with that. I also have your next and <laughs> Friday the 13th part 2. Now we know about the person at the beginning of part 2, but like there there's no intro to our killer. We don't know anything about what's going on. We just know that we are seeing what they're all about. What are their methods? And we knew they I were in a fender bender earlier. We knew they were in a fender bender. I mean, there's information scribbled on a sheet of paper um with the first name scribbled out and corrected um they leave the last name but they mark out the first name and change it automatically that's that looks shady anyway i don't know if that's something that you notice right off the bat it's something i did notice because who has to scribble out and correct their own name if they're writing it down right oh i had assumed that she wrote it down and maybe spelled it wrong okay um that that's a that's a possibility to think at the beginning which i mean you obviously did but later on it becomes more yeah a, i didn't think apparent. about that yeah um huh. okay so one of the the first what you were talking about the phone call in scream in this instance we get you know text messages modern fancy oh, yeah. modern and fancy and you could tell as this uh this lady's taking her uh her nightly bath she gets that text message and she's already confused as to where it's coming from, right? So, like, w- what could this be about? And this is just a game that he plays, I guess. And yeah, when he freaking texts her, he's like, "Hey, uh, how or enjoy your bubble bath." And she's like, yeah. "What?" He's like, "Oh, I just assumed." I'm like, "What the fuck?" You uh, <laughs> that to me built so much tension in this opening. These women and their nightly bubble baths always at eight thirty. Always at eight thirty, and it's like clockwork. I can. Say, what What are you doing right now? I'm taking a bubble bath. Okay, so it must be eight thirty. Set my watch by it. But right, this lets you know that some fuckery is afoot, and she's being watched, and that just that takes the the tension from a five up to a nine. I always I really take like a bubble bath at eight thirty. Oh, I mean. When when he sent her that text and he and she was like excuse me or whatever she said he was like oh I just assumed like I literally was like almost got chills I was like damn like is he in the house like what you know what I mean like you you, you, know, you closed your outside. blinds like, didn't you <laughs> shit put the kitty cat up but you know what? oh James <laughs> do not try to give a cat a bubble bath <laughs> Well, Luna, she she does it for Rick. She she knows that uh, it warms his heart. So, look, she gets the text messages, and automatically she's on the defensive, pours out her wine, and she's dressed again, looking around the house. She gives up on it pretty quickly, which I guess there weren't any other signs besides the text message, which was bad enough. And so she goes straight to bed. But my question is, why did she not see him laying in the bed when she laid down? She's yeah, facing the bed. After. There was no time for that to happen. It was literally five seconds, and he was. Oh, like and don't y'all the... think uh, his mask gives you uh, my bu- my bloody Valentine vibes? I did most certainly. I have that in my notes as well. I was going to bring that up a little bit later, but let's talk about it now. What is? How do you feel about the aesthetic of our uh, our stalker here? It's my bloody Valentine is mask. a very good one. It is a great mask. Um, yeah. At at first view, it, it wasn't cheesy. It wasn't hokey. Like um, I don't want to talk bad about Hellfest, but it was just a little too plain, I guess. I mean, it looked good enough for what they were trying to do because it was a a festival carnival type Halloween thing. But this one means business. It's, the Hellfest it's... mask was particularly frustrating because, and we've reviewed this movie. You should have watched it by now. At the end, when he opens the case, you see that there are other masks he could have used that were infinitely cooler. <laughs> Just made it all the worse. Which, but of course, <sighs> you know that, um, that was my thought. But at the same time, I was also thinking that he got those masks from different theme parks. Uh, as they were being handed out, because there are multiple people. I don't people. believe there wasn't a cooler option. It's probably, true. but that's probably the one that they were handing out at that, um, or not handing out, but handing out to their workers at that specific attraction, right? Yeah, lame ass mask. Yeah, fuck. Em. But this but, mask was yes. good. I liked it. The the, the mask, mask is good. Lame too. What, what did you say? Pretty lame mask. Why did it have eyebrows on it? 
Did it have eyebrows? That's what that was, wasn't it? I don't think so. <laughs> eyebrows on a leather mask? I thought it was like some BDSM type shit. And um, hell, it still could have been. But the entire aesthetic, uh, you know, not only the mask, but uh, the, the leather uh, the, the leather jacket the dark clothing it looked fantastic and his weapon of choice was some kind of like giant switchblade type of situation big ass yeah this this is uh, like an a plus type killer for me like i don't i don't generally think about you know putting them putting them up up there with like the the mount rushmore type you know s- slashers but this one i thought was very well done at first view i'm you know i, I get chills very good but um our slasher, who we're going to know him as the driver, um, as he has said so in the uh, in the credits. The driver. I got more chill looking at a pot of beans. I believe that, James. I believe that. But I think you're downplaying it, James. Honestly. Again, either you didn't watch it or you're full of shit. Because this movie, you would have loved. Simplicity. You don't have to over... You don't have to think about anything. What you see is what you get. And you got a girl at the beginning of the movie get, uh, taking a bubble bath. And then she dies, so it's her fault for taking a bubble bath. Um, but once he leaves, he has this, I guess, I don't want to call it a habit. He has like a, a routine, I guess you could say. He goes to the gas station, and he counts out an odd amount of money. It's like $43 and like... Yeah, it was like $37 and something cents. Yeah, gas. something like... There's no round number in, in that whole amount. So you wonder at the beginning what that's all about. Okay, so you've already got these things running in your head. Why are the names scribbled out on the piece of paper? Why is he counting out this random ass number at the gas station? We don't know. Maybe we'll find out. Uh, but then we get that opening credits overlaying scene of our, our stalker or our driver uh, driving what seems like miles and miles with no specific destination until he slows down beside a random girl. Uh, but then he slowly pulls away. So very effective opening for me. I'm already intrigued. It started quickly and visually looks great. And like you said, Rick, the, the music, uh, the music's out of this world. Simple. Oh, dude, the music is fucking fucking awesome. Yeah, simple but very good stalkery type shit. So this girl that the driver pulls next to and then, of course, drives away, um, she's kind of stalking her uh, her soon-to-be ex-boyfriend a little bit, finds that he's you know running around on her. So she's done with him, right? Terrible time to not have a boyfriend. Because of what because happens she, next? Because of what happens next. And as she drives off, she storms off, as she should, honestly, we see the stalker follow the girl. She pulls away. Like, the car is unlike any other car on the road that we're seeing. Everything's pretty modern. He's driving some old model muscle car. James, I don't know if you noticed what it was. You probably didn't because you didn't watch it. But I'm thinking it's something along the lines of... It reminded me a lot of the the cars in Death Proof, even though they were, like, three different ones. Um... But this one, you know, ha- has that type of aesthetic. Yeah, but it's, it's noticeable. Weird that, like you mentioned, like that that first chick we pulled up to her and he like pulled away, you know, mm-hmm. because like there have been serial killers that they find people on the road, hitchhikers, prostitutes, and they pull up to them and they entice them and they get in their car and then they kill them. And there's people that kill like 20, 30 people that way. So it kind of made me think about that too. But I digress. Well, no, the, it, it's a it's a valid thing though. The, this is exactly yeah. the type of the type of thing that you do think about when you see a film like this. This isn't some far fetched, you know, imagination from from our director this or from our screenwriter. This is like very real shit, and, and to me, that's what makes it scarier. The fact that without having to stretch your imagination, this can very easily happen. So as he's following her, that's when we get to our fender bender. Not enough to do any damage, but, you know, he, he rear ends the uh, the girl that he was stalking earlier. Or, I would say stalking. He, he saw her. She left. He followed. Um, but he rear ends her there. And, again, not much damage done, but enough to, I guess, startle the young driver, right? She's 17 in this role, um, driving her mom's car. And we find out that she just got her license. But there's some, like, crazy things that I noticed about the driver, and not really that crazy, but very subtle things that make you think, wow, that is 
that's pretty fucked up. He has a method to what he's doing. And and, and maybe others have experience with, with such a thing, but he almost walks this line, a very fine line, between being reassuring and being very intimidating. Did anybody else get that? Hate his vibes. Rancid fucking vibes from this guy. He, he was really creepy to me when he... Hit when the he touched girl the her? first time. And when he got out of the car, mm-hmm. yeah, and he touched her. And, and called her a virgin? Yeah, and she was like, huh, what? And she's 17? This dude is being so fucking creepy. But. Like, at no point would I think, oh, this is just a nice guy who happened to hit me. I would be terrified of this man. At your late 20s, mid to late 20s, at 17, he admits fault. First of all, this was my fault. I wasn't looking where I was going. So, first of all, your 17-year-old kid here thinks to herself, okay, he admitted it's not his, it's not my fault, it's his fault. That's reassuring yeah, Of course it's his fault. He rear-ended her. Okay, but you're, you're 17, you're not thinking like that. You're only thinking that your parents are going to kill you because your car's been hit. I mean, yeah, I don't know. I still think it's 17. I think 17-year-old Casey would have thought this guy was a fucking creep. Like, of course, I would have been grateful that he's aware of his general surroundings and that he rear-ended me but i still think i would have thought this guy was a fucking creep possibly and you you know you more than anybody else does probably but i think for the sake of establishing character in the film that's what that was meant to be i think they meant for him to walk this line between being reassuring and being creepy and admitting fault and reassuring her that hey your parents are going to be fine because it was my fault. You, it wasn't your fault at all. I think he's trying to soften her up a little bit. And again, for the sake of establishing character, that's probably what that was meant to be. And then the virgin comment. I think he's trying to get away with, well, actually trying to see what he can get away with. Because if he says, ah, virgin, and she turns around and says, mm, not really, then he thinks, okay, I know what type of character I have. But when she answers like, what? then he can kind of back off of it and be like, oh, it's it's your first time in an accident. And uh, I think maybe he was baiting her as well when he said, should we exchange? Because again, he says, should we exchange? And she says, oh yeah, let's definitely exchange. Then again, he's got something coming to him. But again, she looks confused. So let's exchange information. So he's always got like a contingency plan to everything he says. He can always say something and then back out of it if it doesn't come back to what he wants it to what wants the response to be. That's how I that's how I took this conversation because he does the same thing in the text messages. And, and not to get too far ahead, but when he asks her about the extra car or saying that it's a good thing that your parents had an extra car to go on the trip, I think there was a, an ulterior motive there as well. When she says, "Hey, did that come up in conversation?" Like she noticed, he was able to to back out of that and say, "Well." You must have mentioned it because how else would I know? So he's always got something. Why? Okay. Oh my god. I don't know. What I don't know what kind of car that is, Bill. You don't, don't know, know what kind of what? What kind of car it is? <laughs> the bumper says Chevrolet, but I don't know what that is on the side of it. Well, I thank you for doing your due diligence and at least trying to get to the bottom of it. It's not a Camaro. I know that much. No, nah, it's some kind of Nova or something. Or maybe a Ford Monza. I don't know. It's got me perplexed, Bill. See, James, the the, the sole reason that you're here is to to note these things. And we're coming coming back short, James. I need you to get to the bottom of it. I I can't proceed. I can't release this episode without knowing. All right. Thank you. So, y'all, second time around, they exchanged the information. And that first name is scribbled out yet again. This time with presumably the last name of the lady from the bubble bath. He scribbles out the first name and puts a a, a fake name, a fake first name on that paper. You have to assume that Hillary Diaz coming from the Diaz family is going to give him a piece of paper when with all the insurance information on it, the next time around, he's going to take out Hillary and he's going to put his first name or his made up first name again, which you know, it's a never-ending cycle, or at least never-ending until he gets caught. It's an interesting, it's an interesting routine, and I think there's almost a reason for everything that he does. You can tie it back to things that he's done before and 
later on. So nonetheless, we meet the driver without the mask. We know what he's like. We think we know what makes him tick and we know the next victim and it's Hillary. Bummer. So Hillary makes it back home to her parents and I just need to know who who among us has ever been who's ever gotten in trouble for sneaking out of the house too early in the morning. No. No. There was zero risk of me going anywhere early in the morning. There still isn't. Oh yeah, I was going to say I never outgrew that. You mm-hmm. still won't catch me outside of the house before 11 a.m. I haven't yeah. gotten a Hardy's breakfast in so long. Oh, man, that's sad. But even as a teenager, like sneaking out of the house, it's never done early in the morning. This is a late at night thing. Yeah. After everybody's sneaking supposed back to be in into bed. the house, perhaps. Yeah, and that is way early, like still before everybody's yeah. up. And her dad got Bill. so mad at her. I was like, what the heck? <laughs> Yes, James. It's a 1976 Buick Skylark. You just okay. said it was a Chevy. Well, Buick and Chevy is the same thing. Is a but Buick it... Skylark the car that's from my cousin Benny? Yep. It's, Watched that it's, last it's, night, Bill. It's one of the two. I don't remember if it was the actual getaway vehicle or if it was Daniel Son's getaway. It was Daniel Son's vehicle. And it was a Uh-oh. Pontiac Tempest that was. Pontiac Tempest that really done it. Oh, man. Mm, what a movie. <clears throat> and what a lady. But this one is a Buick Skylark. I don't think he knows. I, I, think he's, I, I think he's saying he's it because he watched. My Cousin Vinny. I think so. I think he wanted a reason to bring up My Cousin Vinny. No, this is the movie. This is the. You car said there was the a. Movie. Buicks don't have a Chevrolet emblem on the front. Not often. No, because they're a Buick, but GM makes Buick. So GM is a part of Chevrolet. But didn't you just say that there was a Chevy logo on the front of the car? No, it was a Chevy bumper. You said bumper. Okay. Okay. Well, that explains it. Don't ever sass me again, Bill. Well, you know, words are important, and I think you said logo or something. I don't think you said bumper at the beginning. I said bumper. We got it recording, so it will be the truth shall be known. (laughs) Why are these parents wound so tightly, first of all? So, I don't know. Her dad gets so pissed off. I'm like, what I the have heck? concerns about this. I don't think they, they wanted her to seem... go to begin with. No, I think they wanted a solo vacation. But <laughs> they seem more angry about the fact that she got rear-ended, which is out of her hands, than they yes. do about the fact that she snuck out. Yeah, how do you get punished for somebody hitting you? Now, yeah. I, if it were my parents, they would have been pissed that I didn't call them or, like, get a police report in the moment or something like that. They are not concerned about any of those things. They're just mad that someone hit the car, which is out of her control. Now, should she have taken the car? No, but they don't seem concerned with that as much at all. They don't really specify at least super explicitly to me, which is what I need that the reason that they're angry is because the car was hit. They may still be angry with the fact that she snuck out without permission. And then her punishment is to stay back and take care of the insurance. Maybe. I don't know for sure. What? The part that bothered me the most, though, is how they force... And they do this on TV shows and movies, forcing the bilingual thing where they put in random Spanish phrases. I was going to ask you about that. Yeah, it pisses me off. It kills me. I hate it so much. Like, uh, you'll you'll see uh, an episode of fucking i don't know csi or something and they'll go to some hispanic kid's parents and knowing damn well the 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 mom speaks perfect you know english and she's talking to two white people she's still gonna say el es mi hijo he's my son you just said the same thing twice why are you saying a spanish phrase and then repeating it in english there's no reason for you to throw that spanish phrase in there except to establish the fact that this is a spanish speaking home and that puts forth the thought that that hispanic families don't speak english first when that's not the case at all i laughed when she just Here said k go. out of nowhere what did you say <laughs> I laughed when she just said K out of nowhere, like nothing K? prior to that was Spanish. And then she was like, K? Like, oh, <laughs> all right, I guess you guys speak Spanish one word out it's of every weird. 468. And then go, uh, Spanish. okay. <laughs> so the dad is actually uh, Gomez from um, not the Adams family, but um, Breaking, Breaking Bad. Bad. Yes. And uh, 
that's the only place I can hear his voice. He doesn't even sound right being in another movie. He should not be allowed to play in any other parts. <laughs> You're limiting he, his career a bit. Yeah, he yeah, he's done now because he he died in like one of the ep- one of the seasons. But the fucking parents have now kicked Hillary out of the family trip. So, you spoiler know what that on means? Breaking Bad, I guess. <laughs> right. I'll put the spoiler alert at the beginning. <laughs> spoiler Breaking Bad. <laughs> <laughs> We know that this is a horror movie podcast. <laughs> However, shit happens. Well, y'all stalkers be stalking, right? They do. Stalkers be stalking. And She's not even in the bathtub, though. No, no. But, you know, before that, though, before Hillary calls up the insurance company, which is important for reasons to be revealed later. And, man... I really love me a good reveal via phone call, a la when a stranger calls. A la Black Christmas. A la Black Christmas. I love those calls in movies. A la cart. <laughs> best okay. day. Best day at school for the cafeteria. That is true. You tell no lies, James. Do you want some fried pickles and a side salad? Well, get it a la carte. You don't want fried pickles? No, but I want a side salad right now. But, you know, they did a really good job building tension once the parents were gone, uh, especially with the stalker's car. Um, But is it the stalker's car? Well, we can't tell from all the trees, the fence, the foliage. So, like, we're seeing a car go by, and we know what it is. Hillary doesn't know what it is. She's kind of she's kind of shaky on it. She looks out. She she stops in the middle of her phone call just to see what's going on. But you just can't see enough of this car. But we're seeing something that Hillary can't. And right now, she's none the wiser. He's at the house. He's what? He's at the house. Yeah. yeah. And then more text messages. This is Too like many text messages. He has his routine. Look, I'm just saying, first of all, you did not ask me earlier my opinion of this movie. Little hurt. Well, it's coming. It's, it is. I didn't like this movie. You didn't like the movie at all? It had its moments, but no, I did not care for this movie. I could One of my biggest complaints, James, you didn't watch the movie. One of my biggest complaints (laughs) is that. The text messages are overbearing. I understand that this is the form of communication that they are using, but there's a sequence that feels like this sequence feels like it is almost 10 minutes long of just them texting back and forth. I am bored. That's his MO. That's what he does. I don't care. He should do something else. It is boring. I th- I think you're, you're saying visually for the movie. It allows it may- me nothing. It was pretty boring. Just latch on to the to the dolphin's back, James. She'll That's swim you out where you need to be. Dolphin. What's MO stand for? Modus operandi. Huh? Modus operandi. Is that something that Triple H has got on his jacket when he comes out? You were speaking Latin <laughs> earlier. You tell me. Modus operandi. Oh, that's a criminal. That's a criminal term. It's not just. It's not oh, just here not comes Mister. <laughs> here comes Mister Criminology. I am taking criminal investigation this semester, so... Go ahead and tell them what's up, David Caruso. (laughs) All right, so there was a knife in the uh, Professor Plum in the kitchen. I'm playing. (sighs) God. So what does that mean? Is that what M.O. means? Yes. Yes. It means the thing he does. calling card. Yeah. That thing he does. (laughs) So again, they you know he brings up that second car for the trip, which wasn't mentioned in the first convo, uh, but he convinced her that it was. Like this could give away his stalkiness. So like, why do you think he does this? Why do you think he so loosely does things that would cause somebody to repel from him and like even report him for harassment? I think Maybe he likes it's not the, the chase. harassment part. He does like to chase. I mean, and again, I, I think it goes back to the fact that he has a backup plan in case she wises up to it. He can just but dismiss it like he did. Like a power play. To like me, that's a power play. Yeah, to try and like have one over on her and make her feel uncomfortable. Like clearly, these things he's doing, he's like calling her a virgin, touching her weirdly, like on the shoulder, stuff like that. That's not the way in which normal people communicate. I know, like you said, that he's kind of testing his boundaries. He's doing it in a way that allows him, like, total power over the situation. He knows this girl is 17 years old, was in her mom's car, like, 
the communications that they're having, he is making her uncomfortable on purpose because he likes the power that it gives him. Sure, sure. Uh, and because it throws her off her game. Well, first of all, you don't know me. I'm like Buster Bluth. I, anybody I know, anybody I see, I might not even know him. I'm just coming up massaging shoulders left and right. That's what I'm doing. If you... <laughs> You in, know in that the is the envi- furthest thing from the truth. <laughs> but also, like, I'm trying to picture the environment I, in which I met you. <laughs> yeah, just come up. Hey, how's that going? Hey, brother. <laughs> hey, Buster, could you not do that, buddy? God. Okay. Well, I mean, he, he's not only doing the the overbearing text but he's leaving a cake on top of the second car which she has to go out and get um no nah. see you had issues with the text scene i had issues with the going out to get the cake off the top of the car scene because that could have been a lot more tense like historically the trip out to the car from inside the house has always been great for suspense it's also um, usually where you get the first time injury like you trip and skin your knee or you get shot through like a fleshy part of your body that's not seriously damaged or you know like the character who's gonna die first makes the mistake of going outside and get or if it's the hero they get hit, hurt in a minor way absolutely the scene We're was not about... scary not at all there was some good music playing and that made me think because of my past experiences with horror film that something might happen, but there were no bells or whistles built into this scene. Um, I could have used like some lightning crashing or just something to give me a jump scare. They were in the middle of like a, a, a near storm, right? Like it was about to start raining or something. Wasn't it? Yeah. It looked like it. Yeah. See, and I think it's raining when her friends come by. Okay. See, I, I needed something from this scene. Like I, I do think this nothing, scene, nothing at all. And I think it would have elevated the film itself because of what you expect later on. I don't know. I'm, I'm not a movie, uh, a movie maker. I'm just a, a guy that watches them, but this TV 14 rating. And I know shutter says unrated, or maybe IMDB says, uh, not rated. Um, shutter says TV 14, the TV 14 rating can really kiss my ass because we had two showers slash slash bath scenes where we could get the goods, but no, we got nothing. She's supposed to be 17. I don't think we should be seeing anything. Well, she's fucking 22 in this film. She's 28 now, okay? I need something. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Like, the first scene, sure. That girl seemed older. This girl's a child, so I'm fine with the fact that we see nothing. I really would have wanted no that first scene. No goods were to be had. No goods were to be had, James. And it's a damn shame. But... You know, the stalker does get some photos of Hillary with her own fucking phone. So, oh, gave yeah. me so, hush vibes. Don't know if you've seen Hush, but definitely gave me some hush vibes. Yes, that's an awesome film. That's Shut one up, I'd Rick, love to touch on it. later. It's on Netflix, Billy. You should check it out. I will I pick it at some point for my movie. That, that, that's the one with the deaf girl, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Now that's. Sh- <laughs> So, what does Hillary do? She goes back to the bathroom to make sure the bathroom in the photo is actually the bathroom in her own home. As if you can't identify your own fucking bathroom. I mean, James I mean, would be able to, because he would notice the, the yeah. five-gallon bucket in the corner. Mm-hmm. Rick would be I mean, able to, because of all the, the maxims on sitting like, on top of the toilet. That's right. FHM, Yeah. <laughs> But I mean, maybe like in that situation, though, she had to make sure, oh, shit, is this really my bathroom? Like, is he really in here? You know what I mean? Like, is a am I am I am I really seeing what I'm seeing? You know, type thing. Rick, that's like saying if I put on sunglasses, you would have no idea who I am. I mean, I can't tell who people are. You can't identify masks, your own so fucking bathroom. How I can't tell people who, who people are wearing masks on their face now. So, I mean, it's, it's valid. I'm not saying. He, I'm not saying anyone's wearing a mask. I'm saying if someone showed you a picture of your bathroom, would you have to go stand next to your bathroom with the photo and go, yep, that's it? Well, no. Or could you go, I mean, oh, that's my bathroom? I'd probably say it's my bathroom. Jeez, you hated this movie. Good Lord. I did not like this movie, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Well, once she's, like, checking out the bathroom, she looks down and sees these muddy footprints, right? Um. So 
not hers. She just got no, out of the bathroom. Right, right. And unless she has like tread shaped bottoms of her feet, then definitely not her. <laughs> Um, <laughs> traipsing through mud. <laughs> yeah, but at least she gets some good scrapping clothes on, right? Like she gets the Louisville Slugger, and like brings me to my question: like right now, at this point in the film, is Hillary shaping up to be a good final girl? She's aiming for it. She's doing some dumb shit, like walking through the house, going "Hello," and like walking out to her car when there's a mysterious cake on it. So she's making some classic horror dumbass mistakes. But she yeah. does grab a bat. She has some form of defense. She's not in the bathtub. It's not 830. Um, Aren't all cakes mysterious, though? Um, no, they're not. Well, hang on, hang on. Let, let, let's say that you walk into Sward's house and you glance, over, you, you glance over at the counter and you see this cake and it's decorated What's the first thing that you're going to ask him? What's that for? Why is your birthday cake early? (laughs) Why does it say sorry on it? Or what is that for? Mystery. All cakes are mysterious. That's not true. If you walked in on June 25th to your home and there was a cake, (laughs) what would you think? Well, but this wasn't her June 25th. I'm just saying not all cakes are mysterious. They're mysterious until they're revealed not to be. And the date being what it is would reveal it not to be mysterious. On June 24th, if there's a cake, I'm saying, hey, what's that for? And what's on the inside? Like, what kind of cake is it? Faux show. You know, some people identify the cake based on the frosting. Like, a yellow cake with chocolate frosting to them would be a chocolate cake. What kind of fucking depraved insanity is that? That's communism, is what that is. People do that? Yes, I saw a whole Twitter thread about this. Many people do this. James, what say you? Uh, you? You've got a yellow cake with chocolate frosting. Is this a yellow cake or is this a chocolate cake? Mm-hmm. Bill, I've got a, a yellow cake with chocolate frosting on it right now. And how do you identify it as I'm mine? Like I, just it, I just call it a cake. <laughs> That's like saying a cream cheesecake could have red velvet, strawberry, carrot, any kind yellow of filling. Cake. If you yellow offer cake me a cream cheesecake, frosting. yeah, if you offer me a cream cheesecake, I want it if it's carrot. I do not if it's red velvet. Because everybody no, knows you got to know what's, what cake. Because when you go to the damn store and get a cake, it'll have what the insides are on the cake. Right. Ex- exactly. Like marble or yellow or chocolate. I'm are we about to... This. this is rare. Yeah, I was going to say, we are 100% on this. It's nice to be in unity with my Man. friends. Mm-mm-mm. Oh, is somebody else here? Fuck off. Oh, God. Well, surprise. It was just Hillary's friends probably dropped off the, the cake, and we're not sure if it was or not. But they showed up right at the time those pictures were taken and the footprints were there and the the cake showed up on the car. So there they are. Two friends, Eric and what's her name? Rachel. Rachel. Rachel and Eric. Eric and Rachel. But the turning point here is that it was in fact not Hillary's friends who put the cake on the car or snapped the shower pics. Iron (laughs) Horn and Finkel. (laughs) Or (gasps) deleted the accident pics. I didn't catch that the first time around. Oh, not, it's Rick scratching his ass, probably. Not until Hillary mentioned the deleted accident pics. Yeah, did I didn't notice? catch that at all until she said it. No, I did not catch that whatsoever. It should have made that a bigger realization. It should have been a much bigger line. Like, who the fuck deleted my accident pics? Because now my parents like, are really going to kill me. Who would have a motivation to do that? Nobody. Correct. It sure isn't going to be Eric and Rachel. But also, but speak- if you've already called your insurance agent and had the whole conversation with them, would you not have then emailed them to your insurance agent? Well, she's 17, Casey. I'm saying the insurance agent shouldn't should have asked for any photos. Oh, that's true. That That's definitely true. And I know that my agent would have. Yeah. And they know they're talking to a 17-year-old kid. James, you're rolling those head, that, that headset down a hill or something? That's not me. Just dragging it through gravel. That's not me. Rick, you better mute that mic if you're trying to hook it up. God, he's probably... Oh, sorry. I thought I muted myself. My bad. I just plugged my headphones back in. Raking the microphone across his teeth. Sorry. (laughs) 
I'm back. Like he's like he's playing a xylophone. I'm back. <laughs> Welcome back, Rick. It's always well, me. It's always well, me. You were the one. Really you're the only one on the call. I, so, I mean, you got like damn it, sixty dollars, hundred dollar microphone that didn't even fucking work half the time. Shit. Well, no, no the, the the new one works. Twenty bucks. Twenty bucks. <laughs> <laughs> so back at the house, back at the ranch, Andy's back. And Andy, if you remember Andy, he's the fucker at the beginning of the movie who got broken up with by Hillary for hanging out with some other sleuth at the at the fucking Starbucks or wherever they were. And he comes over and he's like, she means nothing to me, babe. Such a cliche. Yeah, such a cliche boyfriend trying to come back. Like, they hit all the stereotypes with this one, though. Um, he won't go away. Um, so really, honestly, it's very appropriate for Andy to be the first one to get it, other than the lady in the cold opening. Like, good riddance. Like, good job, he sucked. Mr. Driver. Yeah. Dude, but that one scene where he... He stabs him. That was some pretty good gore in the throat and the blood gushes out and everything. I was like, damn, finally. Is that yeah, not what... Yeah, than I thought it would be for TV 14. Again, which brings me... It makes me wonder about the disparity between the two ratings. IMDb says not rated. Shudder says TV 14. Does Shudder operate on a different scale? Is TV 14 like R in the real world? No, I always thought TV 14 was like PG 13. Because if you're watching like house yeah. house was tv 14 i remember that so to me that's yeah. like a pg-13 situation and like tv mas are basically oh yeah, yeah tv yeah, ma yeah. is uh, like the walking dead and things like that the walking well, dead damn right so andy had those muddy boots first of all so it's easily assumed that he was the one that left those prints and he's the one that took the pictures and he's the one that deleted the accident pics don't know why he would do the third thing why would he do that though yeah right don't Makes know no why sense. he would do that but because to uh, our knowledge he didn't even know about the accident so why would he why would he even look for those correct i mean if i've got no good answer to that i'm just throwing out things but yeah she's not gonna suspect two different people like andy coming in snapping pics of her in the shower and then a completely different person deleting the pictures off her phone she clearly looks down at his feet and sees the mud all over his shoes So that's the first thing in her mind. But let's talk about Andy's death. Rick, you just said it. Uh, It was gory. It was sexy. I loved it. I love the weapon that the driver uses, that switchblade giant knife. I'm going to give this kill a solid four slashes just because it's Andy and fuck him. Yeah, I'd definitely give it a four for sure. Well said, Rick. I'll give it a three. (laughs) I thought the first kill was better. That's why. The first kill was like more painful to watch because the knife went into the back yeah and like that just hurts to watch but james i guess you should make up a score since you didn't watch the movie but killing andy how many slashes do you give this kill i'm gonna give i'm gonna give it <laughs> a two i mean who who didn't know that was coming it's fair well, you didn't because you didn't watch it <laughs> it's fair though You had to know that as he's walking back out to his car, we're not just there to see him get in his car and leave, right? I mean, how many times has somebody been killed like that? It's just terrible, isn't it, James? Happens every day. Happens every single day. Wake me up when I gotta write another. (laughs) So the insurance company calls back, and this, this is why I said that it was important to establish i don't i don't even know if i did say that i meant to say that the phone call with the insurance agent at the beginning was very important to establish because that is hillary's line to the outside yeah she got her cell phone or whatever but this is a person who has been made abreast of the situation she's got the information but she's got new information now um the name given to the insurance company did not match and the person who was on the account was found murdered at the exact address. Presumably the lady we saw in the cold open. I don't think that an insurance agency would go that far. I mean, they got to follow up with her. Yeah, they had to call to get a hold of the the owner. They would just say you got some bogus information from whoever ran over you. But But the names all match. Nighttime? Same yeah, Mike's called me a nighttime before. Yeah, most well, definitely. Well, he sounds hideous. 
I mean, they're open 24 hours, so... Yeah, that is true. But, I mean, they've got to call somebody and get a hold of the owner of the vehicle. And when that person does not answer, but maybe a family member does answer, they say, I'm sorry, but my sister was murdered in her own home. And then the name that's that's on the, the slip of paper doesn't match. May, I, I still don't think that they're going to spill that information to the person who is wanting to file the claim. They're not going to just spill that somebody was murdered. But they did seem pretty familiar with each other. So I don't know. Maybe they're like longtime uh, business associates. I don't know. But, Do you think there's some kind of small town insurance agency? Well, yeah. Could be. I like think my uh, insurance agent is Miss Terriana, our uh, fourth grade, third grade teacher. That, that was our second grade teacher. Whoever. Well, she's my insurance agent now. I think she would tell me if I said, I've been run over. Well, the person I know you has been murdered. Well, she would, and, and that's why it's not far-fetched. That's what I'm saying. But, I mean, you know, we have a connection, Bill. It's not just, you know, willy-nilly oh, lady on the insurance other company. <laughs> Fly-by-night insurance. This is Ted calling you. That person who hit you has been murdered. <laughs> so, in their own during, home. <laughs> during this call... The, the, the line cuts the line cuts the, the the phone call is over and what do we have we finally have the home invasion that we've been waiting for he's inside the house oh he's decked God. out in his in his bdsm gear he's, he's got, got his eyebrow. knife he's, he's got, got eyebrows on his mask he's got leather eyebrows <laughs> looks like a looks like groucho Marx. i tell you what he'd get he doesn't have eyebrows. Yeah, I don't know. I'm just going off of what I'm just going off what James says. <laughs> I just googled the map to make sure there are no eyebrows in this picture. It's like round, round, raised hole <laughs> with no hole there. Are you well, talking about the eyes? Yeah. <laughs> well, eyes, no eyes, eyebrows, same thing. It's eyebrows. <clears throat> well, anyway, I tell you what, this guy gets. A uh, twelve gauge. So meet, meet Mr. Twelve Gauge. Maybe he did watch it. <laughs> the thing that pisses me off the most about this killer is his right. slow yeah. reaction time. <laughs> Other than his eyebrows, it's his slow reaction time. <clears throat> At the beginning when he was in the bed with the you know first what it reminds me of Do tell James. Yeah. Remember when Kevin Callister, Kevin McAllister had the uh, nightmare of the furnace in the bottom of the house? <laughs> <sighs> That's what this guy's mask reminds me of. His face reminds you of the furnace. Yeah, from Home Alone. A horror movie in itself. <laughs> God. Damn. Okay, so the the driver spiked the cake that everybody was eating, the mystery cake. I told you it was always a mystery, Casey. He spiked the cake, so everybody's dizzy. How are you going to so, eat a cake you found on a fucking car hood is what I want to know. That's a fair question, James. Especially <laughs> if they have do something stupid like that. <laughs> let's not go too far, James. But, but... The, the the two friends, Eric and Rachel, have already admitted that that was not them. They did not leave the cake. There's no good reason for them to have eaten this cake. I mean, I like cake, but I just ain't eating no mysterious cake kind of a car hood. Well, I just told Billy, you, every James. Every cake is mysterious. Every so. cake is mysterious. But Billy what doesn't are kill- eat cake because he's scared of it. Unless I make it myself. And what Even our then. driver... Well, it's... Yeah. What our driver lacks in reaction time, he makes up for being in, in like having this crazy ability to lie down beside someone so so quietly that they don't notice anything at all. They all have Tempur-Pedic mattresses. Yeah, and apparently... This is an ad for Tempur-Pedic mattresses. <laughs> and apparently Tempur-Pedic carpet also, because when he slid under the bed with Rachel, and she didn't even notice it until she looked over, he must be the most quiet serial killer there ever was it's fucking ridiculous remember in lord of the rings how legolas doesn't leave footprints in the snow he just kind of walks on top of it leaving no trace this guy <laughs> yeah. has that ability i want that ability well, you don't but let's talk it. about let's talk so about the rachel kill Ernest from home alone is a 
Elf? Yes. That's my accusation. That's crazy. <laughs> and Let's talk about the Rachel biker. kill. And he's a damn yeah. good biker, too, because he <laughs> seems to make cakes. <laughs> yeah. It's like his, uh, he would he would be called the baker because he would always leave a cake at the scene of the crime. Is it somebody's so again, birthday? God damn it. No, it's not anybody's birthday. No, but let's birthday. let's talk about the Rachel kill. Cake then. It says sorry. It says sorry on it. Not often a birthday inscription. <laughs> I'm sorry you made it this long. <laughs> I'm sorry I've let you live. <laughs> I'm sorry I stayed awake so far in this movie. I'm impressed that you stayed awake so late in this movie. I like the movie, James. Eat your shitty ass cake furnace from Home Alone. Back to the Rachel kill. With some sort of elf abilities. This one, I give five slashes for the anticipation, the stalking with the vehicle, and the visual of running over the body. This kill was numero uno in this movie, bar none. What say you? And then when he, pro- and then when he props her up on the fence. I that agree with that. Awesome. Oh, well said. All right, so let's talk about Hillary's other friend, Eric. This guy's an interesting cat. You remember we were watching um, Gremlins, and we were talking about uh, Hoyt Axton. I got his name right. We were. Time. Well, this guy, his name is Kelsey Leos Montoya. He is also from... Eric. Also Eric in this film. He is from Albuquerque, New Mexico. Kelsey and Grammer. Kelsey Grammer um, is a founding member of the Cardboard Playhouse Theater Company. It's a local children's theater in Albuquerque. And as of 2016, majored in theater at the University of New Mexico. He wrote a stage play called In Passing at the age of 17 that was produced internationally by a theater company called Trick Lock Company. I think that's pretty damn impressive. That's cool. We're proud of Really fucking cool. Scrambled eggs. I'm calling again. Keep it going, James. Well, I don't know the rest of it. I ain't no Me more, neither. Uh, yeah, that's probably where it ended. But the Eric kill three slashes just for the sick blood gushes coming from Eric's neck. Again, gorier than I thought it would be for a TV 14. Mm-hmm. Because, I mean, th- this is, like, gushing bad. It's icky. So the only person left now is Hillary. Bail, cheap thrills. Cheap thrills, oh. and hey, that's what we're here for, though, right? Cheap thrills. But that leaves Hillary and the driver, and the driver obviously does not want to kill her with his car. He uses it for fender bender purposes only because he stalked her ass in this car, had the opportunity to run her over, didn't do it. He wanted to take her out with his knife, but up of course, up close and personal, up close and personal, put his little put his little mark on it so he can leave a cake at the scene of the crime. Um, but Hillary gets to drop on him, puts a knife in his shoulder, douses him with gasoline. Pops him in the head with a fucking tire iron, but can't light the matches. So, should we update our report card on Hillary's final girl status? I am almost pretty damn close to revoking her hammer status as well. After seeing her run, I feel like the only right thing to do is just revoke it and give it to Rachel or the chick in the bubble bath. Hillary. Or Eric. I'll say it. Hillary is borderline a do-nothing bitch. This girl is useless. I am so glad you said that useless as a cock flavored lollipop this movie i love to see women doing big things i love seeing a final girl i love seeing a final girl win this girl sucked can't even identify her own fucking bathroom you know she's going nowhere i don't think she was that bad rick hot and useless are she she knew how to use a damn she knew how to use a damn cigarette lighter in a car. Give her props. She, she did whoop his ass pretty good. A lot of people probably don't. They probably know cars had those. Listen, mm. Hillary whooped his ass pretty good. Yeah, I wouldn't say she's pointless. And then I'm when it talking, came time, couldn't light the match. Couldn't light a fucking match. In a well, I, are we supposed to believe that it's raining? Because I don't think it was raining at that point. It was set in New Mexico, so probably not. Yeah, but once she gets the driver down, what does she do? She goes into the car, uses the cigarette lighter, but has to wait for it to heat up. Like, am I to believe the driver took that's the keys a, out of his car? But also, what? like, that's not a useful weapon. Like, it only has so many uses. Well, if he Pretty has gas, small. if he's doused in gasoline, yeah, gasoline on it. would it yeah. light? Like, light light, you think? Lights a cigarette, yeah. I mean, yeah, I don't, but you I don't you think can throwing a... it at him is going to do it. Not throwing it, no. And that's a flaw in the know. film. That's a flaw in the film. But hey, it worked here, 
So you can't blame her for something that like she meant to do and worked. Don't worry, I will. But again, cases cases I to believe. Here. <laughs> Am I to believe the driver took the keys out of this fucking car to chase Hillary? It just doesn't seem like something he'd do. Why can't she just start the fucking car and drive off or drive over him? Because she has to die. Well, because she gets him with that movie, cigarette lighter. Just suspend our disbelief. That Shant. is true. That that is true, Rick. Um, I'm 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 with you on that. Don't put logic into lo- illogical situations. Um, but again, Hillary gets the driver with a cigarette lighter, uh, but leaves him, lo- you know, the driver laying in a puddle to go call nine one one. And okay, my issue with that was when he was burning. How are you going to survive that that damn long? Come on. Like, he was on fire for, like, a minute. And he gets in a little a damn time. puddle and he's okay. I'm like, really? Well, he's got that protective leather on him. His gimp suit saved his life. Mm. We need to get James in full body leather, set him on fire, and see how long he lasts. Okay, okay. Well, we knew this was a mistake from Jump Street. Not putting James in leather, but her walking away from him to go call 911. In the nice. genre of film... Rails. <laughs> he singed him right off his face. In the in the genre of film that historically gets the worst cell reception, Hillary can't get through to nine one one. She notices the driver is no longer eating dirt outside, but inside the home once again, in the doorway to her bedroom, and this is when we see the demise of our final girl, Hillary. Death by stab okay. wounds. Yeah. Final girl status revoked. Death by stab wounds. Did this one go as we expected? Did we expect Hillary to take on the driver and prevail? It would have been cooler if she did. I don't want to say that that opinion is unique to you. It's definitely not unique to you. But I don't judge the quality of the movie based on whether the girl survives. And it seems like that is a thing that you Me either. This is just something that adds on to other things that I did not care for about this movie. Yeah, the the thing about the... The, the girl surviving. It didn't it didn't happen in Madman and you hated Madman. I didn't like Madman. Yeah. So <laughs> it feels like the, the final girl survival oh, is the norm and when they divert from the norm, that's when it kinda loses you. Fair? No, if she had let me think about this. Why does if the final I girl winning or losing she, if I thought she had been a stronger contender and she went out really fighting like if it was a fair shot and she had really built me up to think she could do it and just happened he happened to get the upper hand and won i felt like this was not an evenly matched fight and i know in final girl situations a lot of times it's kind of a kind of a hail mary that they actually win but i did not feel like this girl had it in her to win she's 17 Plenty of final girls that we watch are young. She had a lot of fight in her, though. I don't know. I don't think no. this girl had the good goddamn common sense to win in this movie. I, I do think that, that for every really strong and, move she made, she made an equally bad one later. Yeah, I agree with that. I don't know if she could tie her own shoes. I think she had Velcro shoes on, Bill. <laughs> she very well could have. Don't be knocking Velcro shoes, James. Don't you fucking dare. Well, the driver's post-murder pattern of taking the money, filling the gas tank with the exact amount he takes, I I guess that explains the random payment at the beginning of the film because he just kind of emptied her wallet into his hand and said, "Ah, okay, whatever this gets me at the gas station is what it gets me. I don't think that there was anything beyond the superficial process there, I guess. I thought there was going to be a little bit more to that. But if if we're thinking about what's going on in in his psyche, you take every dime that you can, put it towards fuel, and wherever that takes you is the random place that you're going to end up killing again. Yeah, because the first area code is Nebraska, but the second one is Colorado, and this movie takes place in New Mexico. Yeah, so he's he's taking road trips. And it feels like, whereas we might throw a dart at a map and say, okay, let's go there. He's just saying, I'm hopping on um, I-40 and I'm going to see how far I can get. And wherever the the, the fuel light comes on, that's where I'm getting off. Because that's what he did during the the closing credits here. Yeah, I mean, and that's that's legit. Because, I mean, people like Jeffrey Dahmer killed people in Utah, California, Michigan, Florida. Went all over. Where have you killed people, Rick? That's uh, that's, uh, PHI. 
<laughs> PHI. Okay. PHI. Protected Health that? Information. That, that's a that's an industry term, James. Um, at one point, <laughs> Casey, Rick, and I all worked uh, at the same company, and it was a healthcare company, and we were. It was professed to us that we cannot share PHI with unauthorized parties. And uh, protected health information is what that stands for. And there was a running joke that anytime somebody would ask something that we just didn't want to answer, it could totally not even be protected health info. We would just answer, hey, that's PHI, man. (laughs) Brick, I've decided that you're combining Jeffrey Dahmer with Ted Bundy because Jeffrey Dahmer killed everyone in... mm, yeah, Wisconsin, Ted Bundy. Sorry, I got, I got except one in sorry. Ohio. Okay. Yeah, sorry, Ted Bundy. What does it say? That is not accurate of Jeffrey Dahmer. Whoa. Like amateur. <laughs> well, the reason Rick was wrong about it is because he's not on Dahmer's PHI. So Rick was wrong. Or we can all celebrate. Okay, guys, I'm going to send you all a cake. It's, all, it's just going to say Rick was wrong. I'm not going to eat it because it's so it's mysterious. <laughs> poisoned. It will be poisoned. It's going to have Tide detergent in it. We are not being sponsored by Tide, by the way. Um, not yet. Not yet. Fingers crossed. All right, Tide, JB. If you're out there. We know you are. Sponsor us. <laughs> Allegedly. JB, give me those final thoughts on Fender Bender. This movie sucked. <laughs> Casey, what say you? Didn't like it. I like parts about it. I liked the opening, the uh, cold open. And I enjoyed the music, which you guys have touched on already. I did like those things, um, and Rachel's kill was pretty good. The rest, right. I you said yes. you said Eric's kill was good too. Yeah, yeah, Eric's and kill and was you gorier than I thought it would be. And you liked the aesthetic of the killer. Yeah, I like the mask. I liked his leather eyebrows. He did not have eyebrows. It sounds to me like the only thing that made you hate this movie was a bad final girl. No, didn't like it. I question your motives. What do the critics say? So, this movie doesn't have a formal Rotten Tomatoes rating. It has an audience score of 43. But um, the reviews this week, eh, we have Shutter reviews that I think were more helpful than the Rotten Tomato reviews. I like Shutter reviews. Rotten Tomato removes what? I like Shutter reviews. Let's go with the Shutter reviews. The Shutter reviews say, so I grabbed a one star one. And I grabbed a five star one. They actually rate on skulls, I should say. They grabbed a one skull and a five skull. I like skulls. Um, I'll start with the one because we can only go up. Um, it says, from now on, when someone asks, how bad could it be? I'll have an answer. I usually don't comment when I don't like a movie, but this was awful. It's like an R.L. Stein adaptation with the F word. If I were babysitting, I'd let the kids watch this. The actors did say their lines. Mm. Uh, the five star, though. Director Mark Pavia has an amazing backstory. This is my second viewing since the initial release in 2016. Great slasher for younger persons with some influential moments for those who aspire to make horror films and have a love for all things macabre. Great ending, too. So, a lover and a hater. A lover and a hater. We have that here. Lovers and haters. Lovers and haters. Speaking of haters on all things, Rick, what did you think of Fender Bob? What'd he say? What'd you say? What? He said, I like corn on the cob. Okay. Uh, I, I went into Macabre. it thinking it was going to honestly not be very good. God, that fucking mic. Um, I went into it thinking I wasn't going to be very good, obviously. But yeah, I was pretty surprised. I, I thought it was good. Um, thought the music was awesome. Um, you know, I, I probably, honestly, I'd give it a 7 out of 10. I liked it. 7 out of 10 sounds fair to me. I yeah. would probably also give it a 7 out of 10. And 7 is better than 5, okay? And 5 is only half-assing it. So this was more than half-assing it for me. I'm pretty happy with the film. I'm glad I picked it. So speaking of picking Pickle Rick, we need to know, the public wants to know, what are we watching this week for next week's episode? All right, so we are doing um, the 1989 slasher film Intruder. It is available on Tubi. Uh, Pluto TV, if people have that, or if you have Prime, but yeah, Tubi's free. Like we've mentioned, they have a lot of good horror stuff. So yeah, it's on there. Intruder, definitely not Flight of the Intruder, not Flight of the Bumblebee, um, not Iron Eagle Three. I don't know where else James could possibly take this. I'm just trying to cover all bases. I like Iron Eagle movies. What's that guy's name? Uh, (laughs) Nope. 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 
Damn it. Lou Gossett Jr. Lou Gossett Jr. I knew you were going to try to say James Earl Jones. Also in another good movie, Enemy of Mine, Lou Gossett Jr. and uh, Dennis Quaid. So, I knew we would go... I knew we would go there. We are watching Intruder. Find it on Tubi TV or where else did you say, Rick? Uh, it's on Pluto TV and if you have Amazon Prime. Pluto TV, Amazon Prime, Tubi TV. I'll be checking it out on Tubi TV. So that's going to do it for this week's episode of Slashers and Screamers. So for the Godfather of... God damn it. For the Godfather of Joel James, for the Memphis Menace Rick, and for Final Girl Casey, I am Billy Graves. This was Slashers and Screamers, and we will catch you in the gag week. Hi!